my entire life I wanted to be an engineer. For one, I, when I grew up, uh, you know, as a, a young teenager, I was sort of trying to figure out what is the most fun thing to do in life. And I decided back then it, was, it would be to build better products, to, to innovate, you know, to build beautiful products. And uh, little did I know back then that I eventually would come exactly to the right place where you couldn't just uh, learn about how to do this, but you could actually then go off and start a company. Uh, the Sun Workstation itself uh, came directly out of a Stanford project. It actually stands for the Stanford University Network Project. And it was uh, actually truly built, you know, the first 10, 20 units, you know, by yours truly here. Uh, at Stanford, that was in 1977. Um, my, my first project was actually to do uh, computer to design uh, software programming on a mainframe and it became clear very quickly that that wasn't going to work because there was just not enough cycles to do an interactive kind of display. And uh, my next thought was, well, then let's just build a computer to run the CAD program, which became the workstation. So it was actually very much a, a, a solution to a problem that I perceived. The key of the Sun workstation was it was a true 32-bit machine. In other words, you could run the same kind of programs as on a larger mini computer like the digital VAX at the time, or even a mainframe on this little box that would cost $10,000 instead of hundreds of thousand dollars. So it was a gigantic leap in both cost performance and usability because you could give you could afford to give each engineer a dedicated workstation. So this was actually very different than the um, personal computers at the time, including the IBM PC and the Mac even, because those were much more limited in terms of the kind of programs they could run. But back then, uh, things moved a little more slowly. Uh, you know, there was sort of the large established companies and then you know, as a, as a new startup, you could move more quickly. Whereas today, you're actually competing against other startups that just uh, became public or are still very, very quick on their feet. So uh, I would actually say it's more difficult today, uh, but the opportunities still exist. You know, when people look at why did a, did a startup fail, there's only five reasons. One is it was too early, or it was too late, or it wasn't relevant, or it was too expensive, or there was just no, no value proposition. But if you're not too early and not too late and you had the right value proposition, startups are actually usually successful. So this is the surprising thing is that one just has to pick the right thing at the right time. Of course, what that is changes with each generation of technology and, and opportunity in the market. I guess my advice would be for anybody who ever thought about starting a company to come to Stanford, learn about it and then actually do it. Now, I wouldn't have done what I've done in my life if I hadn't been here.